Dwayne Laughlin here. Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel. Time to talk about what happens when we do things that we should not do and why we should not do the things that we should not do. We'll illustrate this matter with a large yellow scarf. And I'm going to tie a knot in the scarf because that's what we're talking about, things that we should not do. Now, of course, I'm not really talking about a knot, as in the kind of knot you would tie in a handkerchief, but I'm talking about things we find in the Bible that we're not supposed to do. We're not supposed to take the Lord's name in vain. We're not supposed to steal. We're not supposed to lie. Those are things we find in the Ten Commandments. And there are other things we're not supposed to do. Not supposed to be guilty of harsh words, unkind behavior, and so on. Well, one of the great things we find in the Bible is we can be forgiven. When we do things that we should not do, if we confess our sin, God forgives us of our sin, and He makes us new. It's as if that thing that we were not supposed to do is taken out of our lives. And it is, because we're forgiven. Yeah, that uh, matter of the past simply becomes the past, and God doesn't hold, us, hold it against us. But here's what some have questioned, and that is, well, if, if um, God forgives us, and we know that He does, then why shouldn't we just go ahead and do whatever we feel like we're, we want to do, even if it's something we're not supposed to do, because we know God will forgive us. You know, I can commit that sin, I can tell that lie, and then I can get away with it, because God will forgive me, and uh, He'll make me brand new again. Well, there's a lot of reasons why it doesn't work that way, and why we don't want to live that way. One is, when we understand that because, or God can forgive us because of what happened on the cross, and that Jesus Christ died such a terrible death and paid such a terrible price to make our forgiveness possible, when we understand this, we find ourselves loving God, and we do not want to do what we should not do. We find ourselves feeling bad about these things. In fact, I really question if a person's even truly a Christian, if that person doesn't care about sin. If somebody says, well, I'm going to just do whatever I want, because I know God will forgive me. I don't believe that person understands the gospel. If you understand the gospel, inside of your heart, there's a new want to. You want to do the right thing. But you still, now and then, give in to temptation, and you do what you should not do, and you have to seek God's forgiveness. But let's get back to that attitude. The person says, well, I, I know if I do it, God will forgive me, so what if I just do whatever I want? won't matter, because in the end, God will forgive me. In fact, there are some who might say, I don't think I even want to live my life for Christ right now. I'm going to do whatever I want, even if I'm not supposed to do it, and then just try to make sure that I turn to God and be forgiven at the very end of all of it. Well, here's another verse in the Bible that applies very much to the situation. In the book of Galatians, we are told, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. But it says, God is not mocked. And it means there are consequences to sin. God can forgive you but you can still hurt because of the things you did that you should not have done. For example, a man can go to prison and in prison be forgiven. God forgives him, but he's still in prison. There are many things we do that God doesn't want us to do because those things hurt us. In other words, yes, God forgives, but there are people who made wrong choices. God's forgiven them, but there are still scars and holes. There are places of loss in their life, places of pain and struggle, lost marriages, lost health, lost income, lost reputation, so many things that could have been different, could have been better, scars they never would have had if they had done the right thing in the first place. So there are many reasons why we should not do what the Bible tells us not to do. The greatest reason is God loves us, and because He loves us, we love Him back. But also, in His love for us, when He tells us not to do it, it's because we're better off not doing it. And if we go ahead and do it anyway, there are scars and there is loss and there is pain that we could have escaped had we done the right thing the first time around. It's always best to obey God. Even though sometimes it's hard to understand and sometimes we find ourselves facing challenges, doing the right thing, living in obedience to God, is absolutely the best way to go for life and what a blessing it is to know that such a life moves on into eternity, where forever we enjoy the blessings of heaven. Thanks for tuning in. This is called Knots Off Silk. Uh, that's my gospel application. I often just do this on stage to music for fun, but I think that's a very good lesson that can be told with the Knots Off Silk. We don't reveal secrets on this uh, channel, but I'm going to show something here that those who know how to do the trick should understand, but it doesn't really give away the secret to those who don't know. 
but you'll notice that I picked up the handkerchief uh, and started it uh, after the video had begun. In other words, the way I've designed Knots Off Silk here, you can do it any time in the show, where typically uh, people have to figure out how do I pick it up, and they sort of feel like they have to have it in their hand right away, so they walk on with the trick. So I'm going to show it to the camera, and hopefully it'll make sense to those who know the trick. But what I did is I simply took a little gift box, I think I got it at a Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that, and inside of it I taped a piece of poster board with open sides here and here. And so what that means is part of the silk gets tucked in around here, part gets tucked around here, but when I reach in to pick it up to start the trick, my hand goes in and around what it needs to grab. And again, I trust you know what I'm talking about. So I can pull the handkerchief out this way, and I'm into the trick and able to do the trick any time in the show rather than having to uh, have you know, stepped off stage or out of sight for a moment to get ready for it. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If it still isn't clear, let me tell you that this coming Jan or June it is, uh, that's 2018. I was thinking about some of you who have been watching this channel for years. So this is year 2018. I'm doing this one. June 8th and 9th, we're having Gospel Magic Day here at this studio in Branson, Missouri. What you're seeing is the backdrop to the stage on the studio, the camera's on the stage, and that's where I do these videos. But anyway, it is opportunity for you to come and get in-person training and inspiration. We're going to have a day of group teaching, a special emphasis on technology, how we run our sound systems, things like that, but also lots of gospel routines. But previous to the group day is a day of personal training where you can come in and let's say you're trying to learn how to do a trick like this, we'll just work with you in person and help you get it mastered. But anyway, you might go to www.christianillusionist.com to get more information on that. Otherwise, email me at laughlinmagic at yahoo.com so I can send you information and maybe you can come and see us here in Branson, Missouri at our Grand Magic Studio. Enough of that. That was a gospel lesson for Knots Off Silk.